Hello. Good day to everyone and I welcome you to the another episode on mold flows tips and workflow. In today's episode I am trying to differentiate or clarify a little bit doubts around the conformer cooling. I created a sample model to show you how different types of mesh can be used and analysis time can be significantly reduced for the conformer cooling channels. And often users, you know, when they look at the conformer cooling channel or something like, you know, uh, spiral type of cooling channels, the channels which are drawn deep into the core, uh, they often consider that it has to be meshed with the 3D and um, whole of these things has to be performed only with the 3D analysis and so. Well, that's the right approach. I'm not saying it's the wrong approach. But that could be a simplified or better approach to it as well. So I did a comparison between a like an, a simplified approach and the usual approach that every of the users follows. Let's look at into a sample example that I created, and probably this will help us to reduce uh, analysis time as well as the confusion that often gets created that whenever we see a confirmed cooling channel or heard the buzz name like confirmed cooling channel it has to be done with the 3d so with that let's get started to get started i created an actually a very uh, simplified uh, model of like two cups uh, as you can see on your screen um, these are like the base diameter of like 75 mm and to the bottom diameter that is of around like 120 mm and the height of is around like roughly 200 mm or so and i created like a two cavities and as i can as you can see that uh, just off this one i created a, a spiral type of cooling channels as you can see and but obvious when you see like these are the complex cooling channel right? but obvious that uh, in your face thinks that it has to be done with a 3d or tetrahedral mesh as well well i'm not saying that's a wrong approach but can be there be a simplified approach for it or many times um, you don't have a privilege of having a conformer cooling analysis uh, with your license and probably you have to wait till the license upgrade or so and, and and what I did is I, I also created a mold block around it and uh, if you want you can create a mold block around it as in I created in the fusion um, so that you reduce down a little bit of work uh, when you try to create a, a cool FEM type of analysis uh, in the mold flow and make sure that you subtract each of these uh, components that's like part the cavity side cooling channel and through the core side cooling channels I subtracted out of it and so you create a impression what do you mean by subtracted is that if I off these channels even that will have a impression in my mode that is needed and if you want to try out a uh, different approach of solving it probably you need to have the curves as well so make sure that your curves are there uh, whenever whatever you are doing it your curves are there uh, with your cooling channels including the spiral cooling channels you should have the curves actually so this is an alternative approach I'm mean saying if you don't want to go with the alternative approach straightforward go with the 3d uh, analysis then you need not to worry about whether the curves are there or not and many times the question has been asked uh, can we import these model as you see or these components as you see on your screen yes a bunch of yes including your hot runner fit system or cold runner fit system it can be imported as it is and I'll try to demonstrate that uh, as we move forward. So let's begin with uh, importing the but obvious the part geometry. First, we'll start with the part that I have it. Now, if you want to go with the 3D one, 
but obviously you can go with the three bar but i go with the dual domain first and show you the alternative approach as well as the 3d but obvious that's the natural way uh, many of the users would like to go for it so i imported these two geometries and uh, I have an option as soon as I put the geometries, let's get started with putting the gate locations into the center of the part. And uh, if you have already imported the fit systems, uh, you can model the fit system uh, as you do in a normal procedure. Then in this case, I'm going to add the cooling channels. I created the IGS curve for it and i'm going to open it uh, and as you can see that's the igs curves goes and fits in over here as it is and also i'm going to add the uh, uh, curves from the cavity side as well and that's pretty much easy it was quite an easy for me to do do that and that's all i have to get started and then you can mesh this part you can mesh these cooling channels make sure that cooling channels are connected also and uh, and change analysis sequence from the your cool fpm so that it gives the options of like uh, creating the mold component um, or meshing the 3d mold mesh and of course uh, for tetrahedral mesh you need to create the 3d mold mesh so in these approach is that the part would be a dual domain this will be a dual domain part cooling lines would be a 1d elements and rest of the things the mold would be a, a 3d mesh so let me show you how does it would look like uh, once this has been completed actually and this is how it would look like uh, let me off the mold tetras and uh, also the things you can see now here the beam elements has been created out for here for this and this is a dual domain mesh that i created for this part and uh, and when i create a tetra mesh this is how it would look like actually so in this case i'm using a very hybrid approach keeping a very minimalistic that is needed uh, for the cooling analysis like many times the question is being asked how well it these cooling channels are been represented with the one dual element i would say that till the time it is able to capture the shape of the cooling channels uh, nicely i would suggest that it is a, a good approach i mean to say there is nothing wrong in it let me show you the you know the option Control B. Let me open the beam elements of all these channels and select the associate not needed. Uh, I'll select and put it into the my beam circuits. Assign it, and then I will off the mold tetras. And you you can see over here very nicely these cooling channels has been you know been captured with those pr properties actually. So there should not be any challenge. Uh, in capturing those uh, details so till the time i would say that 1d element can capture the actual shape it need not to bother whether uh, should i mesh with, with the 1d but that could be a uh, possibly the cooling channels are like very organic shape you know that cannot be captured with the uh, 1d element then the alternative is straightforward go for the 3d part and how to go about it and uh, first I will show you the import process. I will start with the importing a complete mold as it is as you see on your screen because many times this question has been asked can I import these as it is. Yes sir, you can import as it is. I have confirmed a cooling part, cooling lines as it is and I am importing as a channel solid 3D. you have to be a little patient when you are importing a bigger assemblies but i would say that with the 2023 release the speed of importing the model has been significantly improved compared to the alternative uh, earlier versions so what i am going to do is i off this one and uh, 
cooling channels has been imported and these are spiral cooling channels I will, sorry, I will leave it this one and first and foremost thing I would put it as the cool uh, set the injection locations into the set part center finish it and we will begin with assigning the properties so for the cooling channels or I will change the my first and analysis type as cool FEM and then um, I would select the channels and say that change the properties or yes change the property type to the channel 3d okay. and then uh, the last element remaining is the block I will say that change the property type to the mold block 3d hey okay. cool then I would begin with the meshing of the part then the meshing of the then in this case probably you would need to create and uh, sorry cooling inlets for the channels you will make sure that you assign the cooling unless until you assign those properties it's not going to mesh it actually okay probably it is Okay. and then here as well okay why is it not sure okay there we go and then outlets sorry and shall go ahead Then only it will be measured unless until you assign those boundary conditions. Then only. So first and foremost, I will mesh the part, then the channels, and then I will create a mold 3D mesh. And after doing this, how does the part would look like? Is something like this. So I cut the half section of it. These are the like a tetrahedral mesh you created. You can see that these are like the I created around like 10 layers and uh, of the part. Though it's a thin wall part, still I can manage to create and like in a boundary layer mesh of up to three layers, uh, up to 10 layers. Okay, and uh, then I created those uh, channels and yes channel tetras has been created out and this is how it would look like you can see this these are the part these are the confirmer cooling channels and very nicely the mesh has been created out over here you can see that how good boundary layer mesh has been uh, created around the part and around the cooling channels and precisely everything has been captured very nicely um, I like the the way the mesh has been created out of here the only now concern is that compared to the earlier one the dual domain mesh which we have created is around like 28,000 elements um, and uh, mold tetra is around like uh, around like 1.3 million elements yes 1.3 million elements for the mold mesh and uh, 28,000 elements i need to compute for the part versus the cooling or versus here i have created around like 2.7 million theta elements for the mold uh, again like a 0.2 million or roughly like 0.25 million elements for the cooling channels and uh, say 1.6 million elements for the mold mesh. In and all, roughly around like 4.5 million element has to be computed around it. So let's uh, see that which analysis gets completed earlier and we will also do the comparison between the results for the dual domain mesh versus the 3D mesh. And uh, basically here approach is to solve it faster and without compromising the results ah, so probably in the next episode i will show you the how the result comparison would look like 
uh, between these two see so stay tuned and i will talk to you again thank you for your time